redefining your identity. And why would we want to redefine our identity? Well, we came into this earth uh, as a descendant of Adam, the first Adam who sinned and that sin nature was passed down to us. And then when we accepted Jesus Christ, uh, we were related then, we were in Christ Jesus and that's a totally different identity of who we are. And it says in Romans 8, uh, verse 29, that we are being conformed uh, to the mm -hmm. image of his dear son, Jesus Christ. And so I'm going to ask Sherry to read this. And if we're being conformed, that, doesn't, that means we weren't that way to begin with, but we're changing and God is changing each of us so that we're going to be looking more like Jesus, talking more like Jesus, thinking like him and speaking like him. And, and doing his works. And doing his works. And so our identity is changing. And most people are stuck with the old identity. That's not the way God yeah. wants them to be. He wants them to take on their identity in Christ. Mm -hmm. But that's the mindset uh, keeps taking us back to the past, where where we came from and uh, who we are and what all has happened to us through our life. That's the past. And uh, it's not looking forward to the future. And so we need the identity of who you are in Christ. And uh, I love the example that Tommy was giving, that uh, he wanted a name for his child that he could call that name and the child would know who they were. What's the same for, with our Heavenly Father? He has a name for you. You know, he writes a, he wrote a new name on your stone. That's what Revelation says. Hallelujah. A new name. And so when we hear that name or when we hear what he's saying about us, it, it needs to cause something to go off inside of us. That's who I really am. Let's read this uh, verse in Romans 8. Here, please. Romans eight twenty nine. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his son, so that he would be the firstborn of many brothers and sisters. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. See, when we were born naturally, uh, we had life. And then that life came from God because all God, life comes from God. Uh, but now... Uh, we've got a new identity. We've got a mm -hmm. new home. Our home is heaven. Hallelujah. It's no longer earth. We're pilgrims passing mm, through. through this land. Uh, and our home is heaven. And uh, in Ephesians, uh, it says that we have been seated in heaven. We've been raised up far above. Ooh, hallelujah. All and, and, powers. Powers. and we're seated mm -hmm. in heavenly mm -hmm. places with Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Don't you think you need a new identity? Not an earthly identity. Hallelujah. Spiritual, a spiritual identity. Spiritual identity. And uh, it, we begin to see this in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, that first we were of the... Adam that sinned and fell in the Garden of Eden, but now we are of the last Adam, and now that's oh, our family. Oh, so we've been taken out of the uh, one family, an earthly family, oh, and we're in a sinful family, and we've been put into uh, the family of God. So I want you to read these verses, okay. Sherry. First Corinthians 15. <clears throat> verses 47 through uh, 49, and this is from the message uh, translation. We follow this sequence in the scripture. The first Adam received life. The last Adam is a life-giving spirit. That's Jesus. Mm, hallelujah. Physical life comes first, then spiritual. A firm base shaped from the earth. A final completion coming out of heaven. The first man was made out of the earth, and people since then have been earthy. The second man was made out of heaven. Ooh, I love that. And people now can be heavenly minded. They can be heavenly in the same way that we've worked from our earthly origins. 
Let's embrace our heavenly end. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's who we are now. And so we're not the same person we were. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Jesus said, if you continue on with your life, with your natural life, and you try to hold on to it, you're going to lose it. Yeah. But if you gain hold of the new life, the life that I have, Jesus said, if you take hold of that life by putting it in, to death by crucifying it, then a new life will come forth. And that's exactly what's happening uh, with each of us. Uh, we've got a new life uh, coming forth. And uh, it, it, we see it here in Romans uh, chapter six, that our old man has died. It died. And when did our man, old man die? Well, it died on the cross with Jesus. Hallelujah. And, and Hallelujah. We're buried in baptism with him. Amen. And, Amen. And, but we're not left in the grave. He didn't. He didn't stay in the grave. Uh, he came up. He was resurrected, and we're supposed to do the same with the new life. And so I'm going to ask you to read this from Romans Ooh, six. Okay. Please. But before I read Romans six four, I'm going to sing a little song, and it goes like this: I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. All oh, things have passed away. I've been born again. More than a conqueror. That's who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Hallelujah. Romans 6, 4 says, Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised up from the dead, through the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in the newness of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're now in the newness of life. Amen. That's, that's what we need to be looking at, not the things that have passed, but let's look at the newness of life. Uh, the old man was crucified. Yes, amen. And Sherry must have been reading my notes because she uh or sang a song from Second Corinthians uh, <laughs> 17. Uh, 5, 17. So read those verses. Okay. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creature. Hallelujah. The old things passed away. Behold, all things have, have uh, things are new. And I love verse 21. And a lot of people do not quote this verse. And they do not understand this verse. If they did, they would be walking in a different way. But in verse 21, it says, He, our God, made Jesus, whom knew no sin, to be sin on our behalf, so that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it says that all, it says, old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new, and all things are of God. Amen. All things are of God. Hallelujah. Amen. You Woo. know, uh, related to what Cherry has just read here, uh, this is an important day in history. It's October the 31st. And something very important happened in October 31st, uh, 1517. And that's when Martin Luther wrote his theses and nailed them to the door of the, of the church. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it, basically, the issues that he was having was that in the Catholic Church, uh, they were selling salvation. So they sold it for a price and, and they told people he had to work uh, towards salvation. Mm -hmm. uh, but when uh, Martin Luther read the Bible himself, he saw that that's not the case. We live by, by faith. Amen. Amen. And, and so this is a really important day for us to come and celebrate uh, what Martin Luther did mm -hmm. because he started the Reformation. This yes, is the day of Reformation. Hallelujah. And uh, it was the Protestant movement started out of that. And so uh, that's a big, big difference. A mm -hmm. lot of us have roots in uh, Catholicism, uh, but the difference, one of the things that, or some of the things that Martin Luther pointed out was that we don't have to go through a human priest. We are a body of priests Hallelujah. and the priesthood. And so we're, mm. we're all can go to God through our prayers. And, and, and so that's totally different than the mindset 
that uh, Martin Luther was brought up. Uh, he, he thought he had to go through somebody, uh, but that's not true. I mean, we've got access. We have access. And when we become born again, we have access. And so we can't act like uh, we did in the past. Once we're born again, mm -hmm. we're different. And it's not because of our works. It's because of the work of the cross. Hallelujah. We, in have, us. we believe, we believe in what Jesus did on the, the cross. cross. And that's what makes us new creations, mm -hmm. new creatures, something that had never existed before. Uh, and uh, that is an exciting thought that, that we are totally different than all of the generations that uh, came before us uh, uh, over and over again until Christ came and died for us on the cross and he purchased Amen. so Amen. many things for us and our identity then what what is our identity and why does it even matter well our identity is in what Jesus has provided for us Amen. and the promises that he has given us you know it's by the power of those promises that we are able to partake of the nature of God. Oh, I love that. Amen. And, and so that's Amen. why our identity changes. It's because he gives us promises. And as we uh, walk in those promises, if we believe them and receive them and walk in those promises, then our nature changes. And our nature, we become more like God. Uh, like Jesus Christ, that we're being conformed into his image. image. Hallelujah. Into the image, image of, of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Now, if that's true, we have two types of thinking. And, and one is the old man, the old self, and the new. Mm -hmm. So there's an old and a new. And this is a process that has to, or that we all have to go through day after day. It doesn't just happen one time and you say, oh, I'm going to put off the old man and I never will have that old man. Well, what happens is that the old man wants to resurrect himself every once in a while. Yes, amen, uh, so amen. So you, you might be going along and then all of a sudden a little anger uh, jumps up out of the grave. Uh, you may have buried it under the water, but all of a sudden anger, woo! Yeah, somebody, just jumps up. Somebody pushes a button or somebody does something that you don't like and a little anger comes. That's the old man. That's the old nature. And see, uh, Ephesians 4 tells us we're to put off that old nature. And that's Amen. an ongoing Hallelujah. process. Read Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. That you put off <clears throat> concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind and 24, and that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Hallelujah. 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 Put That's off the, the old new man. man. Put on the new man. And it's about thinking and how we're thinking and how we're observing things and what are we are doing. We need to be thinking like God thinks. Amen. He, he said, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts, but we can take on his thoughts, though, because we have the mind of Christ. Je when Jesus came to the cross, he, he gave us his mind. Hallelujah. Mind Hallelujah. Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I I'm, I'm really get excited. And I, I want you this. to think about something, too, <clears throat> that you have taken <clears throat> on it, it, the, the resurrected body of Jesus. And that body is not sick, and that body is not in pain, and that body is totally <clears throat> healed. Do you see that? And you say, well, that's my glorified body. No, it's your body right now. Because if you believe that you are a new creature in Christ Jesus, and all things are dead and gone, then that means your pain is gone. That means your sickness is gone. That means that you are... You are walking in his resurrection power. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's good, that's Jay. Good. <laughs> resurrection power. Yes. See, it, it, that's what uh, Paul wrote in Philippians 3. He said, I want to know him. him I want to know, know Jesus know him. Christ 
and the power, power of his resurrection. resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. So we want to know the power of his resurrection. Amen. And when we have that power working in us, then we can do great things here on this earth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, uh, there are three basic points I want to make. And, and the first one is kind of an overview uh, of this message is that in order for us to walk in this new identity, we have to walk in wisdom and purpose. Mm, and this mm, is from Proverbs. Mm. Proverbs 3, 3, 21 and 22. And this is from the Passion Translation. My child, never drift off course from these two goals for your life. Listen to them. To walk in wisdom and to discover your purpose. Don't ever forget how they empower you. Those two things, they empower you. If you know your purpose and if you walk in wisdom. For they strengthen you inside and out and inspire you in, and, and cause you to do what's right. You will be energized and refreshed by the healing that they bring. Oh, hallelujah. 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 So that's kind of an overall theme uh, for the message is that we need to walk in wisdom and purpose. See, uh, the blessings that God has for us, they all relate to the purpose. He has put you here on this earth with a purpose. And it's a divine purpose. And it was established in his heart before uh, the world was created, before you were formed in your mother's womb. And so that purpose mm -hmm. is there. And the blessings, they all go uh, with, with the purpose. Mm -hmm. And uh, so some people... Uh, they want to go and do whatever they want uh, according to the flesh, what they want to do in the flesh. But then when they need something, then they want God to bless them. But but the best way, the best way is if you walk, walk in, in wisdom. wisdom and purpose, mm, yes. then you're going to find those blessings overtaking you. And, and, and I love this part that we're going to be energized and we're going to be refreshed by the healing that those two things bring to us. Okay. Hallelujah. That's really important. So yes. we're, we're talking about a new identity tonight. If we're being conformed to the image of Jesus Christ, we haven't always been in his image. And so we're going to have to take on a new identity. And that identity relates to the promises that God gives you. That's your identity. And so, <laughs> all right. Thanks. I have That's something. Okay. <laughs> I, this just came to me. I think we're all familiar with the witness protection uh, process that the government has. And, and, and let me say this, that when, when you uh, begin to conform to the image of Jesus Christ, then you stay hidden from the enemy. Did you hear me? You stay hidden just like a, in the witness protection program the, that person is they have a new identity they have a new name they have a new location and and it keeps them protected from the evil Hallelujah. are the wicked ones that are trying to get to them mm -hmm. well that's the same thing in the spiritual realm that's good hallelujah that's good so we're just we're to to stay in christ and our identity is to be in christ and then we are hidden from the devil and all of his demonic forces. That's good. Okay, now here's my second point. It's about the promises of God, the um, the identity, your new identity. And like I said, uh, uh, God has given you a new stone, and on the new stone mm -hmm. is a new name that only you know. And so when he calls your name, then that causes life to just arise in you. So he gives you a new name, and to go with the new identity that Hallelujah. You have. Hallelujah. And, and the promises and and I just want to uh, mention this one Galatians uh, 3 29 uh, it says that, that if you are in Christ uh, then you are Abraham's seed mm -hmm. and heirs to the promises and Hallelujah. blessings of God Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and so it's those promises when you begin to see the promises that God is giving you it's not the promises he's giving me it's, or somebody else. It's the promises he's given you. 
the things that have become alive to you, those are beginning to define who you really are, what God wants for you. And I'll just give you some examples here. Uh, last August, uh, we had a prophet that said, uh, uh, expand your territory, uh, lengthen mm, your yes, cords, mm. strengthen your stakes. And because God is giving you a new territory. Amen. And then uh, we had a prophet call us yesterday and he said, your new territory is in the South. Hallelujah. Uh, and look so to you, the South. You look to the South. And uh, we had just been the few days before yeah, that in, in Florida. Florida. Uh, and uh, in two weeks from now, we will be in Mexico. And so that's all South and then Cuba's opening up to us. So there's a lot of things. And so first, you know, we received a promise of where we were headed, but we didn't have direction on it. It was just knew that we were going to do more and we're going, God was opening doors for us and giving us new territory. And then as we receive more promises and, and the, those can come in a lot of different ways uh, by prophecy or a prophetic word or uh, from just hearing the Lord yourself or Amen. from promises that you find in the scriptures. Any of those things help define uh, your life and or your purpose. And so as you begin to walk in that wisdom and in that purpose, uh, then you're walking in your new identity. Hallelujah. And that's, that's, you're being conformed to Jesus Christ that way. And, and that's what's happening to us. And that's the way it happens to all of us. We need to be searching the scriptures ourselves. We need to spend time with the Lord, hearing from him. And then he gives us promises. And the promise that he gave to Abraham, uh, which was to bless Abraham and, and, and uh, those people who cursed him would be cursed and those that blessed him would be blessed. And those are the same promises. Those are the same blessings that are available to you. And I just point that out. There are thousands of promises in the Amen. word of God. Amen. But right there is one, Galatians. Mm -hmm. And so it's important for us to know um, the promises. Now, uh, there's so many promises that, that we need, and, and they define who we are. Mm -hmm. When we understand who, what God uh, have puts in our lives, uh, then, then we begin to understand our new identity. And, and this title of the message tonight is Redefining Yourself. It's an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. it, ne it never ends. And if we're being conformed to the image of Jesus, we need to move on in to what God is calling us Amen. into. Amen. Amen. Now there's a passage in uh, 1 John uh, uh, 3, uh, no, 1 John 1, one three. Verse, verse 3, and it talks about our unity and our fellowship with the Godhead, with the Father and the Son and, and the Holy Spirit, although it's not specifically mentioned there. And, and John wrote and said, our fellowship mm -hmm. is with the, uh, the Father and the Son. Now, when we have that unity uh, with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, uh, like John uh, the Beloved had, then that's when those promises come out. Come out. And I just have two uh, different translations I wanted Sherry to read. Okay, first John one three. What we have seen and heard we proclaim to you also, that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his son Jesus Christ. And then is that the amplified? Yeah, the amplified. And out of the amplified Bible. The classic amplified classic. Okay. What we have seen and ourselves have heard, we are also telling you that you too may realize and enjoy fellowship as partners and partakers with us. That's what I want you to focus on. Those two phrases there. Hey, we're, we're connected with the Godhead. We're Amen. connected with the father and the son and the Holy spirit and other believers. And we're partners with them and we're partakers of what they're uh, partaking of. And that's, that's where those promises are. And that's where the blessings are. When we realize that we are far above uh, all powers and principalities, Amen. we're seated Amen. in heavenly places and we're partners with 
God. Hallelujah. In Hallelujah. Christ Jesus. See, when you're in Christ Jesus, oh, that's exciting. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Amen. More. And this fellowship that we have, which is a distinguishing mark of all Christians, is with the Father and with His Son and with Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 That that ought to distinguish us. Amen. In other words, that makes us different than the world. Hallelujah. When we hallelujah. realize that we are in partnership with the Father and the Son and the Spirit, then that makes us, sets us apart. Distinguishing mark. Don't you want to have that distinguishing mark Amen. Uh, in hallelujah. your life? Hallelujah. Now, uh, one of the things uh, that I want to mention is that Abraham was fully persuaded. Mm -hmm. uh, I love this. Ephesians 4. He was no, fully, Romans 4. Oh, I'm sorry, Romans 4. Romans 4, 21. Abraham being fully persuaded that what he had promised, what God had promised, he was able to perform. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, is that you? Are I, you yeah. fully persuaded? Are you fully persuaded that what God has promised you, he will perform it? Amen. Oh, Amen. hallelujah. hallelujah. I, I want to talk, just just, just intercede here just for a moment. And, um, and that is about the new name. And Freddie said that there's a new name that he's written uh on the on the rock and um this this happened to me this was over 10 years ago uh, i was in downtown athens and i parked my vehicle and i got out of the car and i was about to shut the door and the and the spirit of the lord said i'm changing your name today and i said okay i said what is my name and he said, from this day forward, I call you Israel. Now, Israel means prince with God, our power with God. Hallelujah. And so I believe that you can ask the Lord, who do you call me? What is my name? What is, what do you, who do you know me as? And, uh, and, and so the Lord will help you to redefine yourself by giving you a new name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of you just catch hold of that. Hallelujah. You think I'm crazy right now, <laughs> but that, that, that's okay. You Hallelujah. know, just to, because the Lord does that. Hallelujah. He will help you to redefine yourself. Okay. When you're in communion with him and in union with him and, and uh, you realize he's your partner, you can trust him. And uh, that's what Proverbs 3 says. We, we need to trust the Lord Amen. Uh, with all of our heart. Trust the Lord. Mm -hmm. And let me just make this distinction before Sherry reads this verse. And, and that is, uh, the world has a hope. And the hope that the world ha has is like wishing. They wish for something. They call it hope. But they're, it's really wishing because it, it's uncertain. They don't mm -hmm. know. But see... What our hope is, it's an anchor to the soul. To our soul. A and the reason it is, is because our trust is in God and who God is and in his nature. And we can know that he's going to fulfill what he says Amen. he's going to do. Amen. And so Amen. what he promises you, he will, will. fulfill it. Hallelujah. So uh, let's just Hallelujah. look at this. This is our part then, what we need to do. We need to trust him with all our heart. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your pathway straight. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You'll fulfill your purpose. You'll receive the blessings. Oh, glory Amen. To God. Amen. And now, uh, here, here's the, uh, the third point I want, I want to make. And that is, uh, God is a God of restoration. Amen. And we could go in a lot of different ways. And I know I don't have much time uh, left here, but it's an issue that's really important to Sherry and to me about restoration. And uh, I, I want us to realize that if we have suffered uh, some harm in the past mm -hmm. uh, from the devil or from 
uh, people that he has influenced or any type of injustice. Uh, it says in Acts 3 that Jesus comes to restore all things. And if mm -hmm. you've experienced any injustice and you haven't received justice for it, uh, this is something the Lord spoke to us this uh, this week, and that is then your life becomes a breeding ground for the devil. See, if you've, if you've experienced some harm, uh, some abuse, if something uh, bad has happened to you, mm -hmm. uh, whether it was uh, directly from the devil himself or from uh, some person that he worked through, whatever it was, whatever that was, God wants to restore, wants to restore to you. And we're going to list a few promises here of, of restoration. But uh, if we don't ask for justice, then we become a breeding ground for the work of the devil so he can bring fear into our lives mm -hmm. sickness or, or sickness or doubt uh or poverty anger or unforgiveness or bitterness all of those things come uh at you when something bad has happened and you don't get justice for it but you need to realize we have to fight for justice. Amen. And God is a God of justice. He wants to give you justice. He wants to restore all things to you. Amen. And that's Hallelujah. The, so this is my third point. It's restoration. And it's restoration. You can have restoration of all things. And uh, I want you to read just this from Acts 3. Acts 3, 20 and 21. And that he may send Jesus the Christ appointed for you, whom heaven must receive until the period of restoration of all things. Restoration of all things. Is there anything that cannot be restored? It says restoration Amen. of Amen. all things. We know First John 3, 8 says that Jesus came to undo and destroy, destroy the, the works, works of, of the, the devil. devil. So that restores all things. And, and you might say, well, that's in the sweet by and by. Well, where are you? You're in heaven. You're seated yeah, in heaven. Yeah, you're in the sweet by and by. You're a citizen of heaven. Hallelujah. You're in fellowship with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You're in partnership with them. So now is the time for the restoration of all things. Now I'm going to give yeah. you three examples, uh, but they're whatever it is, you can be have it restored. Yeah, whatever it is, but I'm going to give three examples. And from Psalm, I have Psalm 20. Uh, three three. It says we can yeah, restore he restores our soul. My soul, Hallelujah. which is your mind, your will, your emotions, your attitude. That is your soulish realm. Okay. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Okay. Hallelujah. Now, now there's another one here, and uh, I like it because it's about restoring joy. You know when. Uh, little girls and little boys, uh, little girls like to skip. skip. Uh, you just watch little girls. They just skip, skip, skip. And little boys, they run, 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 run. And, and I, <laughs> I look at them, and, and the other day, uh, all of these little children were passing through us and uh, by in front of us, uh, and, and the little girls were skipping and the little boys were running. And, and, I, and I'm thinking, what happens? What happened to the joy mm. to the people when they get up and, and the little girls turn into women and and they don't skip anymore and the little boys turn into boys the men and they don't they don't run anymore. Well, where did that joy go? Well, and then I, I find this verse. Uh, Sherry, read that. Psalm one. fifty one twelve. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Uh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Hallelujah. Yeah. You can have your joy restored. And so for the women, you can you can still skip and the men, you can still run. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, Jump up and down. Amen. God wants, God wants to restore all things to us. And then I have one more final verse, which I, I'm going to ask Sherry to read. Uh, and but I want you to know that there's thousands of promises and we've just hit on a couple of important ones. Uh, but out of those promises, that's when your nature, when if you catch hold of promises and receive those promises, 
by faith, then that's going to change your nature and you're going to be, you're going to have to have a new identity Amen. to go Amen. along with that nature. Uh, and I like this one. This is about health, yeah. health and healing and mm -hmm. well, because that can be restored and whether it's about you or your children or your family, it, God wants it restored. Uh, the devil is the oppressor, but God wants to restore. So read this verse. Uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah 30 verse 17, for I will restore to you health and I will heal you of your wounds, declares the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, I take hold of that scripture and I say that scripture is mine. Hallelujah. It's mine. Uh, he is restoring health. He is restoring my health. And, you know, and the Lord said to me the other day, he said, you know, you don't always have to try to get a healing. You can walk in healing. Walk in healing. That's who you are. You are the healed. You are the whole. You are the prosperous one. You are the mighty one. You are the warrior. You are the fighter. That's who you are. Hallelujah. You know, and in the book of Joel, it says that, that and, and the book of Joel is a now book. If you've read it, you need to go back and read it again. I call it the war book. And it says that the joy has withered away from the from 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 people, from the body, from the church. Uh, and why? It's because if the if the enemy can get your joy, he can possess your goods. He can take over your mind. He can take over your body. He can take over your marriage. He can take over your finances, your children, your family. Oh, if you do not have joy. Hallelujah. Look. And it says that joy is your strength. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord, the joy that comes from, from the Lord is your strength. That's what you're able to fight with. It says, a merry heart doeth good like a what? Like medicine. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. And that's why Brother Fred, he laughs all the time. And people, I tell people, I said, just because he's laughing doesn't mean that he's not going to, to get you. <laughs> because he laughs all the time. He, he, you know, he, just, he wakes up that way. And, uh, and he taught us how to laugh. He called us all into the living room one, one evening. All of our children, our children were little, our three children, and we all sat in the living room, and he says, we're going to practice laughter. And we thought that he was crazy. What is he talking about? And so it started out in the carnal realm, but it ended up in the spiritual realm. And it's impacted our lives. And it has impacted our lives. Our our daughter, Amy Elizabeth, when she was in uh, nursing school uh, here in Georgia, uh, she would say that if she had a big test coming up or a big exam coming up, uh, that she would just start laughing. She would just start laughing. And she said, you know, that came from, that came from what dad taught us. He taught us to laugh, to have joy. And uh, stress can't stay where yeah, you've got joy. That's exactly the stress right. Stress has to go. And also in the book of Joel, it talks about what what all the worms have eaten up and what the locust has eaten up. He's going to restore. He's going to restore everything that the enemy has tried to do to you, or tried to do with your family, or tried to do with your ministry. He's going to restore all of that. Hallelujah. And I, you know, I want to, I want to walk in that divine health. I want to be, I want to walk as the healed. That's part of my identity uh, that, that I want to, to, to come forth uh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we can, we can have a new identity in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And, uh, you know, I, I sense in my spirit that um, I want to bless you tonight. I want to speak a blessing, a particular blessing over you tonight. And um, in, in Lakeland, there was a young uh, adult 
that came to us and she was she was just a beautiful young woman and she was crying and i had never had anyone ask me this before and she said i want you to speak the abraham, abraham blessing Jesus. over me Hallelujah. and the abraham blessing is the the blessing of abraham Isaac and Jacob. Yeah, they all got it. It came down to all of them. It, it came down it, to it, all of them. And, and Abraham is the father of our faith. So he's our father. Amen. And, and Galatians 3, uh, verse 29 says, if you are in Christ, you are Abraham's seed. Amen. And heirs to the promise. Hallelujah. Okay, so bless well, she, it. yes. And so she said, will you, will you speak the Abraham blessing over me? And so right now I'm going to speak the Abraham blessing over all of you and your families in the name of Jesus. So Father, right now, I speak over my brothers and sisters in this meeting right now in Jesus name and over their family members, the, the, the Abraham blessing, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and that, that promise of faith, and that promise of prosperity, yes, I, I say, come in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Receive that blessing. Amen. The Abraham blessing Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen.